next uh, speakers will be another uh, case study. We're going to have Dr. Ian Howells. He's the CMO of Argyle, the Argyle Data as a startup. And they are doing work with Vodafone. So from Vodafone, we have Dr. Volkmar Scharf Katz. Gentlemen. All right. Go get him. <laughs> Cheers. So right, um, welcome, warm welcome to this presentation. And um, um, let me just introduce you. Um, I'm uh, Volkmar Schafkatz. Um, actually, I joined Argyle Data yesterday. Yeah. And um, um, so my, my experience is um, uh, I'm having a, a large uh, experience in mobile communication, mobile industry, which is ranging in, in about 15 years. Uh, so I have two PhDs in uh, computer science and information technology and uh, so the area of analytics is for me always an, a kind of area where I really think uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of improvements can be done in particular in the mobile industry. So let me uh, turn to our topic today. Um, the topic is innovation uh, to prevent fraud. In order to understand uh, what actually we want to innovate, we need to also understand what is actually the pain point right now. So the pain points are we have certain operational issues. So we have a tremendous amount of uh, data that is generated uh, every single second in a network. Um, and of course, uh, fraud, uh, as it happened, um, may impact the brand. Uh, so the brand where you uh, of a company. So it's very important to understand uh, also from a, from, a, from a mobile communication perspective what's going on in the network and really uh, uh, convey a message to the customers we are having a safe network and we take care about you. Uh, another pain point is obviously uh, um, the um, fraudsters uh, who are generating fraud or, or triggering fraud uh, they are getting also very sophisticated, obviously, right? And of course, there is something that needs to uh, be taken care of. So we need to react a little bit in more real time. And also, we need to um, um, uh, um, make sure that we can uh, probably apply different kind of algorithm to analyze whether there is fraud ongoing or not, right? And um, obviously, there is a point uh, um, now uh, we are having crossed where humans actually cannot really deal with all the complexity of data. So, uh, so that's why when you look around the world, uh, there's always this challenge, what is the time window actually to, to deal with fraud? When is fraud identified, right? And of course, one of the interesting things uh, that needs to be accomplished is to do that near, in near real time. Let me, let me go to the next slide. So, once we understand the pain points, uh, then we also need to look at the innovation we want to introduce. So the innovation we are, uh, are going to introduce, they need to be capable of doing certain things, right? Uh, we are aware of, uh, and uh, uh, we are aware of that te technology has advanced in the last years tremendously. Uh, so we also look on now on machine learning. Why we look on machine learning today? Because machine learning is ready for prime time. It's easy as that. So the computational power of hardware has been uh, um, reached a point where performance or concerns about investments in hardware is actually um, uh, not an, uh, a big deal anymore. Analytics. We need to have an analytical capability in place that can actually deal with different kinds of algorithms, like voting of algorithms, to, to accomplish certain results we are looking for. And of course, we are dealing with, as I mentioned already, with a lot of data. So data um, is generated around the clock, and it's a tremendous amount of data. And of course, a lot of networks have legacy data, so we need to also have a kind of uh, um, the capability to correlate data. And as I mentioned already, um, every solution we are talking about needs to be scaled at an extreme level. So uh, every solution we are introducing uh, needs to be scalable, right? Up and down as, as, as required. So 
innovation in, in uh, 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 introducing innovation for port, fraud pre uh, prevention will impact our business. We impact everyone's business, whether the mobile industry, the financial service. So we are impacting the brand perception. We are impacting the uh, the bottom line of the business, and by, by uh, uh, generating or um, uh, developing new services on top of a platform, we are of course impacting also the top line of the business. Now to underline a little bit the the, uh, the statements I, I said before. Uh, we are looking here at uh, a pretty much high value of uh, loss uh, when it comes to fraud. So it's a, it's a business of about 40 to 50 billion uh, dollar per year. That's an, a value that is uh, very interesting and of course it hurts uh, uh, one or the other companies quite tremendously. So I took some publicly available data uh, just to, to make some kind of calculations on my own and I looked at, okay, let's have a look on the US, right? So um, Verizon is one of the biggest um, uh, operator here in the United States. And I just looked at data and said, uh, it's just amazing how many data are generated, right? And uh, you, you see here, it's between 30 and 40 billion CDRs uh, uh, per day. And it's just the CDRs. We are not even talking about the live data. And then I took some also available data, publicly available data, and I made some calculations uh, uh, um, you know, looking at one of the world's largest operators and um, um, looking at the information elements generated every single day, we are looking at about 1.5 trillion information. Uh, uh, um, you know, when you look at fraud, you have to look on 1.5 trillion uh, information elements per day. That's amazing. So, uh, so there must be something on place that uh, uh, can deal with that. So what is, what is it what uh, we are proposing here, right? Obviously an adaptable architecture. Uh, the architecture should be, of course, uh, capable of ingesting live data at a really extreme high rate. Um, and we are talking here about um, uh, real-time machine learning capabilities. So to detect uh, abnormalities in a pattern and um, basically um, um, uh, you know, flex certain, certain things uh, that is um, identified in real time traffic. And of course, one of the most important things is we are taking care of is of course at any given time to make sure we have the highest standards in terms of uh, security and privacy uh, uh, on place. And of course, we are uh, using uh, standard hardware, standard commodity hardware. So this is a critical uh, point here I would like to mention. Ian. Thank you, Volkmar. <coughs> my name is Ian Howells. I'm the CMO of Argyle Data. The company was driven by a really, really simple concept. We understood the scale of fraud that Volkmar talked about. We thought about if Google had that problem, what would Google do? Or what would Facebook do? Or what would Twitter do? Or what would LinkedIn do? And they'd, do, they'd solve it a different way. So the simple idea was to take a big data stack and then apply some secret source around the way we ingest the data, the way we do machine learning, the way we do anomaly detection to de detect fraud. We can detect fraud that was previously not detectable and detect fraud in three, three to four minutes that previously took 24 hours. So conceptually, this is kind of how we do this. So if you think about what Volmer was talking about, you've got traffic data. So we can stream the traffic data into a data lake at over 100 million inserts a second. So we can capture the raw data, which is the raw pain. So the good news is you see everything. The bad news is that's extreme volume, as Welton was saying. Then we thought like Facebook. So when you look at Facebook, Facebook is really good at sharing viral cat videos. But you kind of don't get hit with fraud on Facebook. And they have a thing called a different way of looking at it. And their analogy is, if I'm trying to find a needle in a haystack, it's really hard. But they've got a billion users. So if they break that haystack into a billion haystacks, and have a billion people looking at those haystacks, it's really easy to see the needle. So conceptually, that's kind of what we do with core packet data. So we don't look at it in aggregate. We look at it as millions and millions and millions and millions of time series. And the critical thing here is when we think about machine learning, uh, it tends to be to give you better recommendations because you're a good guy. If I'm a criminal, I'm going to lie to you. And I'm going to behave in a way to evade the rules. So they have something called adversarial machine learning. So our machine learning is designed to catch criminals, not share cat videos with your friends. If you do it kind of in this way, suddenly you can suddenly see in, mega, in a very large scale the anomalous behavior, which is typically criminal behavior. 
So out of these hundreds of millions of time series, I can see alerts for problems. So we can look at the time series here. And people don't call in the middle of the night, but they call in the middle of the day. So we look here at the blue line on the right. It's kind of anomalous because they're, they're suddenly doing a whole surge in calls. And they may be doing Wangiri fraud, they may be doing subscription fraud, but something's kind of weird here. Now traditionally that's kind of easy to trap because it's going above a threshold. So you've got to be clever when you're doing, dealing with criminals. Criminals will attack you at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon because they think you're going to go away for the weekend. So if you compare a Friday to a Thursday, you're done. You're not going to get the right results. So you've got to compare a Friday to previous Fridays. If it's a long weekend, a holiday weekend, you've got to compare it to previous holiday weekends as well. So you need to look at a very extended period of time, even over a 13-month period, to look at Christmas behavior last year and this year. That allows us to detect this kind of thing, which is really below the threshold. It's really low, but it's behaving in a weird sort of way, an anomalous way in the middle of the night, and we can detect that in real time as well. So just to wrap up, we believe by you know, looking at what will Google do just changes the whole way you detect fraud. It's fundamentally better. So we're going from a limited threshold-based approach that the criminals discover really quickly. So if you have a threshold of 1,000, you'll see tons of criminal activity at 999 consistently. So looking at the whole world as millions of time series, going from basically simple rules that are easy to evade to sophisticated adversarial machine learning, from having one algorithm to many algorithms that vote, from having a poor human being happen to discover fraud themselves to the system automatically discovering it and automatically discovering the likely cause of it as well. To do this, you really need to do it at a petabyte scale. You can't do that, this kind of thing in memory. And you want to be able to retain the data over extended periods of time. That's what we call the data lake rather than this throwaway puddle of data. And the critical thing is, you potentially could have done this a while ago, but the cost of the hardware would have been way, way too prohibitive. This runs on cheap commodity hardware. Okay. That's it. All right, so let's run back into the uh, Q&A and discussion part of this uh, interesting partnership. You know what, what, the first thing that strikes me as I'm listening to what you guys say, linking it back to other presentations, we've already heard a few carriers talking about what their priorities for uh, the next year, among them is security. We heard NTT bring up security as a yep. critical one of their three areas of focus. And so you know, I think your case with a different carrier brings to light, listen, they identify as a group, carriers and security is a big problem. Therefore, you see partnerships get made in the field of security. So if we work with this, this you know, when they describe their needs, if you sell into those needs, you're going to have a, probably a decent path to market. So tell us a, you know, a little bit about how you originally engaged with Vodafone, if you could. Well, uh, as before, as I worked for Vodafone, um, um, the, of course, there are um, uh, certain areas where every carrier is looking at, right? And uh, and this is a pain point uh, I mentioned before. So you have a pain in your network, and this is for we across all mo mobile communication network providers. And of course, you look for something uh, uh, that can help you, an innovation uh, that can help you, yes. that can be uh, utilized across multiple uh, deployments around the world potentially, right? So, um, so the engagement was basically to find a company uh, that can help and uh, can help basically to, to, to uh, uh, bring a new quality into a fraud prevention in, in the network. Uh, so that's basically more or less the, the principles you apply. You have a problem, you look for innovations, yep. innovations which, which are scalable. It's very important, right? And also to really uh, uh, get the proof uh, you can deal with uh, a high rate of interest rate, a huge amount of data, right? And uh, um, 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 the focus is basically real time, right? So in a relatively short time period, you get the research you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, Ian, when, when did you, like, as you're doing business development, you're the CMO for this yep. company, you work on biz dev. Uh, where and when did you touch on, on Vodafone first? Do you, do you remember that date, or is that kind of faded off into multiple meetings? I actually joined subsequent to that. Ah, yeah. But I think what's kind of interesting when engaging with Vodafone is part of what they needed was they had a real they had a problem that needed to be fixed. Yeah. And it's kind of it's kind of difficult. It's conceptually very simple, but you think about the the, the blend that you need to do this. You need to understand yeah. mobile in depth. Yeah. It's the packet stuff is pretty complicated. Yeah. You need to understand deep packet inspection. You need to understand petabyte scale databases mm -hmm. and machine learning. That's kind of a rare combination that people they look for a long time for. Yeah. And your organization, uh, you work with Vodafone. Uh, do you work with Vodafone in just the, you know, in the home market of Germany, or do you work in all across the world with them as well? 
Well, uh, I cannot I cannot disclose this obviously. Um, um, obviously, when we uh, when we look at World of Ruin, it's a global carrier, right? And uh, World of Ruin has obviously everywhere, um, uh, you know, presentations around the world, yeah. Europe. Asia, everywhere. Is it true also? Also, one comment about that which just struck me as coming from a software guy yeah. is uh, the size of this market, it's a $46 billion market. Yeah. It's the size of the relational database market. Mm -hmm. And but people don't go from the hilltop and say, we've got a real problem with fraud. So people don't talk about it. Right. It's so not advertised that's a problem. You can say we need help with our LTEA. It's not too embarrassing. But saying we, have, we need help with fraud right. is not exactly going to attract uh, customers. Uh, well, I think, it, well, I think uh, the contrary. I think it's if, if a credit card company didn't protect me against fraud, I wouldn't use it. Right. So I have that expectation of a mobile carrier. It's part of customer service mm -hmm. that they protect you because you can't protect yourself as an individual. So the only way it can be done is at the carrier level. So I think it's a, a core part of caring for your customers. And, and uh, would you apply this in, in the way you're thinking? This is clearly uh, something you can apply to fixed and mobile networks, right? Absolutely. So the, the core concept here is it's around creating a data layer of packets. Mm -hmm. And the, the beautiful thing about machine learning when you compare it to human beings, and there's yeah. a tipping point here, yeah. is if your strategy is I've got 10 fraud analysts, oh, we're getting attacked more, let's have 100. It doesn't scale because the criminals are so sophisticated, they may ramp it up by a thousandfold. Whereas machine learning, I can ramp it up. Yep. Immediately, so that that's the only solution that there is. You basically, you can operate at the speed of crime absolutely. with machine learning, absolutely. right? Because because they, they don't sleep either. No, and they're they're very clever about detecting the the ways around the system as well. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, the main objective has to be uh, has to be to not be detected, right? So yep. they're trying to avoid the it's an arms race, sort of the yep. very specific thing that you're trying to build, uh, and they're battling. Um, <clears throat> so when you guys. Um, you showed some charts, and you showed an anomaly partway through the chart. Yep. So it was halfway through. You said it's not huge, but we detected it. Yep. Get, are you able to you know, trace that back and tell us what, what was that? What might that have been? Do you Absolutely. guys follow that down, or you just kind of shut it off? And go, we don't know what it was, killed it. So we do something called time warping. So if, yeah, it's kind of interesting. When you, when you sit with, you know, <laughs> with a secure, um, fraud analysts, and they get attacked. It's incredibly overwhelming. Yep. Now, the, the real root of the problem is twofold. They're discovering the fraud. They're not being fed fraud. Yep. And when they, if it, sometimes when they are being fed it, they get overwhelmed with false positives. They call it do barking dog syndrome. Right. So they just, just ignore the fraud system. So two things, they discover it themselves, yep. and to validate it, it's just an incredibly manually intensive process. So a really good, sophisticated big data system, A, discovers the fraud, doesn't feed you with a whole bunch of false positives, right. and then tells you, actually, it's called time warping, but it says this is the cause of it, oh, yeah. without you having to personally discover it. Yeah. So if you had an SMS attack, you could say this caused that problem. So basically the first time a human is notified, they're notified of more than just red lights. It's yep. kind of like, this is what's happened, this is the scale of it, these are the probable causes. This, the system can deliver all that information with the first notification. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. And then it, it's, um, it, it turns over to the human then to kind of decide with how to react. So I think the critical thing, there's a joke we always say about, you look at fraudulent behavior, it has to go to a human being to validate it. Yep. And the joke we always say is a fraudster behaves very much like American Idol, and then you get a lot of calls to one number. Yep. So you would never want to switch off American Idol. So you always have a, a human being validating it. What we're making is the human beings way more productive, yep. and having skilled human beings rather than making it manual labor. Yep. Yeah. And, and what is the, the kind of response time you can generate to something like an attack mm -hmm. happens? I don't know, you can actually tell me. I don't know if it happens suddenly. Like a, a typical attack, does it kind of ramp up and build as botnets start to attack? Or is it kind of instantaneous? And how quickly can you, you react? Dep depends on the attack, doesn't it? So yeah. So there's, well, it's just, you, you can basically, it's, it's, it's when we look today, right, it's about uh, the reaction time between, I don't know, 24, 48 hours, depends where you're looking at, right? And now we are reacting in, uh, in soft minute area, yeah. right? Wow. I mean, it's a huge difference. Yeah. Right? So formerly things that could take out different areas of the network, now, Maybe still could do so, but only for a matter of minutes. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So checking the mics to make sure if anybody has any questions. Uh, so regarding this, the partnership, Argyle, how big is, is Argyle Data as a company and where are you located? So we're a Silicon Valley company based in San Mateo, just down the road. We have about 25 people. So how many? About 25 people. 25 people. So a pretty small organization working with one of the largest carriers in the world, right? So how does that scale uh, work? Is it okay? How, do you, how does Vodafone react to working with a small company like 25 people? Is that something that's easy for them to do? Uh, my experience, absolutely, um, and, and of course part of, of every big organization is to embrace new technologies, new uh, innovations, yep. right? 
and uh, at least from my perspective, uh, it's a great experience. I'd like to add one point to that. So we're all pretty experienced in the, in the big data machine learning industry. Yep. And our fundamental belief is you get, kind of get lucky with timing. If any product is more than two years old, they can't do what we did. So there's, there's been a shift in technology yep. that happened probably 18 to 24 months ago. So anything older than that can no way do what we do. I worked in the relational database industry in the, late eight, in the mid 80s. Yep. And I remember going into a data center and there's these, there were these codicil guys and they just said, yeah, I've been waiting six months to have a report, and I wrote an SQL query in front of their eyes in 30 seconds. Yeah. So it was fundamentally the previous technologies couldn't compete, yeah. and that's what's happened in the last 18, 24 months. So fraud systems before, there are like relics yeah. that are operating on small sets of data that are out of date, and they can't track the fraud we're talking about. So you certainly, I can certainly bring together um, a bunch of trends here at TC. You know, we had Art Galvay to just talk about how now we can make... Uh, customer service and, and decisions much more quickly. We have violin memory, you know, we've got a presentation, uh, got a demo booth talking about how they can make the servers react much more quickly, but real time certainly seems to be one of the underlying trends. The ability, to, and, and I think like 3G was for a few years before it actually landed, like LTE was, there's a few years of talking about real time, yep. followed by the actual implementation of it. We <coughs> might be at the turning point where we're actually starting to do some real time things in telco networks. I think it's got to be driven out of here because the people that have pioneered real time are Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, yeah. and the US government. So that's kind of your model, and user, yeah. as you said. So let's go to the microphone. We have a question. Yeah. So uh, maybe a curiosity question. Uh, my name is H.P. Baumeister. I'm from Fraunhofer. Um, the question is, I, is your strategy primarily a defensive one, um, a reactive strategy, or are you actually, you know, aggressively approaching those intruders and, and fraudsters? It's a great question. So Facebook, uh, I can't tell you how much they pioneered fraud detection. You know, if you look in the detail, they're probably the pioneers. And they talk about a couple of things. Everybody acknowledges there's no way you can stop fraud happening. You're crazy if you think that. So there's an attack phase when the attacker is in control. There's a defense phase where you're in control. So there are two things when we're thinking about this. Is I want to minimize the attack phase because that's when they're kind of making me dance. I want to maximize the defense phase. That's when I'm beating them. And the, the way you do that is um, you, you, you can't stop an attack, but what I can do is make it unprofitable for you. So a really trivial, simple, simplistic example to get the point across is the old-fashioned way of doing SMS spam was one number and the same message 100,000 times. I can stop that. But then they say, okay, well, I'm going to change one character every single time I send that. That's cheap for you as a criminal, but then I can discover that. So then I want to be able to say, okay, how about you need 100,000 phone numbers? then you won't bother because it costs you too much money. So the whole point is to measure features within the, or enrich the data set with features that's very expensive for you to change, then you give up. So that, that's the, the kind of the principle. It's true, it's funny to me, I'm a, so I'm trained as an economist, and it seems like over and over that fraud, privacy, I mean, all these open, huge overwhelming issues, I think it's boiled down to economics for me. Like, it's, yeah. it's all about cost versus benefit, yeah. and, and you know, the criminals don't do things if they can't do it at a profit. Yeah. So, and, and one of the scary things is that these great technologies that we all leverage and the people in the room all leverage to offer new customer services and can be leveraged to lower the cost of spying, lower the cost of attacking, and lower the cost of all. And the only way you can do this is with a big, big data mentality. So I may put a thousand features in that's going to be really expensive for you. Humans can't do that. So suddenly I can change the game and make it just too much pain and cost for you. Yeah. It's privacy. We never really had privacy. Somebody could always go through your garbage and pull out all kinds of phenomenal data about you, but there's, phenomenal, there's a huge cost to doing that, door to door, going through the garbage. The internet has lowered the cost of going through your garbage, basically, and, uh, and therefore we are now victims of it. But I think it gives you more privacy because if the internet goes and you, you find out about a person, I can just make it, you need to know a million things about a person rather than 10. Yeah. So this improves privacy, improves security, and again, it's fundamental that you look at, if a credit card company didn't give you any fraud protection, you would never use that. We should expect customer care like that from the mobile operators. Yeah. It's part of their core brand offering, and the people their criminals attack are not people like us who are tech savvy, it's our mothers and our kids who don't know. Yep. So um, along this, this partnership, this road, what, what do you think lies in the future for the partnership between your company, and, and what do you think Vodafone has in store <coughs> along these lines? Is it just you know, carrying on with the business, or are you going to expand the relationship? So I, th I think part of the, the, the beauty of a data lake 